Welcome in everybody to Betting Pros. It's time to place your bets. It is me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia, and today we're going to take a look into the futures market with some contenders. That's right. These are the teams that have a lot of expectation heading into 2023 on the NFL side. And this is a tough market to gauge because the public is always very in on these big time contending teams with the big superstars with big expectations. But as we all know, sometimes those expectations can fall a little bit short. And to help us break it down, where you should place those bets of yours is my good friend Pat Fitzmore is from Betting Pros. And Pat, I know you and I both like to at times target those teams that we think are kind of on the horizon, on the up, the ones that the market really hasn't caught up to yet. But today we're going to talk about those teams where the market is set and the expectations is high. Do you see these contenders sometimes being a big trap for those people looking to make good investments? They can be, Joe. And I do think we are maybe initially drawn to some of the teams that are considered longer shots mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, identifying the ones we like. And they generally provide more exotic payouts. So maybe that's why we're looking at them in the first place. But um, the contenders, they're the contenders for a reason. They have the, the best chances. And even though the odds are a little lower, Sometimes you're going to find value with the contenders. Yeah, absolutely. And the way to stay on top of all that value, we all know, is to download that Betting Pros app. That way you can track all your bets, sync all your sports books. And we're going to be using the Betting Pros system here for these picks today. So what I went and did here is I'm looking for the best odds that I can find on Betting Pros. For those of you who still don't know, Betting Pros gives you all the different sites at once. That you can make your wagers and it cherry picks the best ones with the best odds so you can make the most money. That sounds good, doesn't it? Don't forget to subscribe to Betting Pros on YouTube, wherever you get your pods to, and click that little bell on YouTube for notifications. So, you know, every time a piece of content drops here on BP, we're going to take you through some of the win totals of these contenders. We're going to look at some of the odds to make the playoffs and also some of the odds on these big favorites to not only win their conference, but maybe even get to the Super Bowl as well. So, Fitzy, I want to start with the Baltimore Ravens. This is a team with, I would say, renewed expectations, a team that all of a sudden now has a very happy quarterback who got paid in Lamar Jackson, a new offensive coordinator in Todd Munkin, not to mention some new weapons, Zay Flowers in the draft, Odell Beckham Jr., maybe even a healthy Rashad Bateman. The number right now for them on betting pros is nine and a half. That's the best number on the over you can get, but the juice is heavy. Minus 160, that's not appealing. The under, however, is interesting because we're at 10 and a half there on the number minus 115. Pat, can you write a script here where so much new here, despite the expectations, might hold this team back and they could on, end up being maybe a 10 and 7 squad at the end of the day? It's possible, Joe. I mean, maybe the offense doesn't take flight under Todd Monken right away. Maybe uh, Lamar isn't super crisp coming back from the injury. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if there's value to the over. Uh, if I had to make a choice, yes, I do think the Ravens are probably going to finish with more than nine and a half wins. But at minus 160, I'm not sure I see the value to betting at um, it, part of it, Joe. Like the AFC North is uh, tough. It's right. one of the two divisions, along with the NFC North, that probably any team could win, any of the four teams. And while the NFC North is four sort of mediocre teams, in the AFC North, it's it's four pretty good teams. And uh, yes, the non-divisional schedule is a little bit easier for the Ravens with the uh, AFC South and NF and. FC West. So while there are no pushovers in division, uh, out of division, yeah, they get the Texans, the Titans, the Cardinals, the Rams. Mm. So yeah, leaning over here, but um, I don't know, it, it could conceivably finish under 10 and a half. I just don't know if the payoff is enticing enough at minus 115. Yeah, it's a dangerous one for me. I'm going to lean towards the under. I think they are right at 10 and it's, uh, it's tricky because you mentioned the out of division schedule, maybe a little bit more on their side, especially the non-conference one. But I'm looking at improvement from the Steelers. I'm looking improvement, hopefully, from the Cleveland Browns, too. And as you're right, this is a dogfight here in the AFC North. Another team, too, with expectations the last few years, the Buffalo Bills. Now, we know the Bills number is 10 and a half here on betting pros. The over minus 134. The under at plus 128. Interesting you're getting plus money here on the Buffalo Bills on the under at 10 and a half. Uh, not an enormous number. Uh, again, we're looking at the Jets making a step forward. We saw the Miami Dolphins do well last year. We saw this offseason the Patriots address their offensive coordinator issue, and it was a huge issue. 
I'm a little concerned, Pat, that maybe the Buffalo Bills window is starting to close a little bit. I think that Sean McDermott calling the plays now on the defensive side wreaks a little bit of desperation to me. And I saw that team the last year or so get a little older on defense, a little slower on defense. I have some concerns about the Bills this year. Do you have any concerns about this number of 10 and a half? Are you going the over, the under, or you're staying away? I think I'm staying away, Joe. But if I were going to bet this one, I would probably be drawn to the under. And uh, you said it, the, the defense, granted the Bills were number one in overall DVOA last mm. year. Like they were uh, a very good team. But we saw the defense get pushed around a little bit in the playoffs, which we're not used to seeing. Um, this division has gotten tougher. Uh, the Miami is a, a contender now. Like they're legitimate on both sides of the ball. The Jets have a real quarterback now. So, and, uh, you know, they already had one of the better defenses in the league. They're going to be tough. And maybe the Patriots with a real play caller, mm. Bill O'Brien coming in, can, uh, you know, get them to playoff contention again. So very difficult division for the Bills. And uh, listen to this stretch they have, Joe, from week 11 to week 16. If you're betting the over on the Bills, you better hope they stack wins early because in week 11, they're uh, at home against the Jets. Then they're at the Eagles, a bye, mm. then at the Chiefs, at home against the Cowboys, and at the Chargers. That is a murderous stretch of games right there. They could easily go one and four there. Um, they're a good team. They could also go four and one. But um, yeah, this it, I just don't get the feeling the Bills are going to be a bully of the AFC this year and you know stack up. 13 14 wins yeah they stacked up 13 last year but they were only four and two in the division last year and i think the division got a little bit better and more competitive the cincinnati Bengals are kind of a tough one right now but there might be some opportunity with joe burrow uncertain to start the season on time as we're recording this year in early august the over on them is at 11 and a half plus 130 the under at obviously 11 and a half as well, minus 144. Now, this was a team last year that did handle their business. They were 12 and four. Uh, they were six and one at home, six and three on the road. They were, however, 500 in this very tough division. I think they can get back to 12 wins. And with the plus money to me, this is the better wager. I, I do believe it is going to be a struggle to get there. But at the same time, I have a lot of faith in the quarterback and Joe Burrow, as long as he is healthy in the beginning of the season to start. I think this number is achievable, but I'm waiting on this one because I think you have to a little bit to have a little bit more clarity. What are your thoughts on the Bengals number at 11 and a half? Yeah, the waiting, uh, is that a reference to the Joe Burrow injury? Oh, yeah. Because that's certainly important. Mm -hmm. And it, like the Bengals defense is good, but not great. Right. You know, it's a, a solid unit, not exceptional. The Bengals ranked 18th in special teams DVOA last year. So uh, very average to below average there. The offense is loaded, but this Burrow calf injury, like if he's not at 100% to start the season, that could be problematic. And uh, it, it doesn't inspire unwavering confidence in me in betting over 11 and a half wins when they're going to have to come out hot to get to that number. I don't know that I love them under 11 and a half either, Joe, especially when the juice is minus 144. So I'm, I'm inclined to maybe not play this one. This might be one of the most fascinating ones we're going to talk about because Pat, the Lions don't usually show up in the contender show, I would say. Maybe the last, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 something years. The Lions and contenders really haven't gone hand in glove. But now here we are. They are sitting as the favorites to win the NFC North. They are sitting at nine and a half as the number, the over on the nine and a half minus 121, the under nine and a half at plus 115. Now, just to kind of recap last year, what happened with the Lions? They did get to nine wins. They were five and four at home, 500 on the road, five and one in the division, though. And this division is a little muddy uh, because we have Jordan Love playing quarterback for the Packers now. We have the Bears trying to take a step forward. The Vikings are the Vikings. We know what they are and we know what their pluses are and their deficits. But you're looking at the Lions, too, as a team that for the first time is not playing the plucky underdog and now all of a sudden has expectations. Isn't that a tougher road? And do you think the weight of those expectations could lead them to the under, and if so, um, the under is interesting because you're getting plus 115 on it. It's funny, Joe. We see this very generous win total of <laughs> nine and a half for the Lions, and it's actually been bet up mm. so that it's, uh, you know, like you get plus money on betting the under. And Joe, you and I have been watching football for a long time. <laughs> We're fellow Graybeards. 
When is the last time you've seen this much public enthusiasm for the Honolulu Blue of the Detroit Lions? Many, uh, many years. Barry Sanders, yeah, I mean, Scott Mitchell, Herman Moore. These are the names that come to mind. Uh, many a Thanksgiving disappointment. But yes. yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a small window. Let's be honest. I, I think that maybe you had it during the Stafford Calvin Johnson era, a little bit of hope. But unfortunately, the defense has just never really panned out there. Yeah. And um, I just wonder, like, this is clearly a better team and a, a good mm -hmm. team, a playoff contender, no question about it. But I do wonder if the Lions are maybe still in a talent consolidation phase where they've added these new pieces and, and still haven't quite put them all together just yet. Um, yes, a soft divisional schedule. And uh, they play all the teams from the AFC West and the NFC South, which is generally favorable. The offense could be really good. But then again, it's Jared Goff, who I think at best is probably a league average starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe that's generous. And then, you know, we've got a defense that ranked 28th in DVOA last year. So, yes, they have made personnel upgrades on that side of the ball. But I don't know if this turns into, um, you know, a Jets caliber defense in one year. It's going to take time, I think. Yeah. So um, it's not like they're going to be lights out on defense right off the bat. And I, I just wonder if this is a team that can get to double digits on wins. I think at plus money, I'm inclined to bet under nine and a half. I don't think they're quite ready for prime time yet, Joe. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. And I think this is going to be really interesting. I think teams react far differently when all of a sudden they're not the underdog. They're the favorite. We see it in every sport. Uh, it's a little bit tougher when you have expectations weighing on those shoulders. All right. Another team that is okay and comfortable with expectations is the Kansas City Chiefs. They've been to uh, plenty of Super Bowls in the last four years, and you're looking at the Chiefs right now. That number is 11 and a half minus 134 on the over on the under plus money at 115. And I got to tell you, Pat, for me, I'm teasing this number up and I'm trying to get a better number because I still believe in the Chiefs. Uh, they were seven and two on the road last year, six and oh undefeated in that division. The Chargers are always going to charge her. I know Sean Payton's there, and I think Denver's going to be more competitive, but competitive and wins don't always necessarily mean the same thing. The Raiders look like a hot mess potentially. So, I mean, the Chiefs won 14 games last year, and somehow year over year got younger and faster on offense. The defense is pretty much intact. So is the offensive line. To me, this is, again, a 13-14 win team. I would tease this up to get to 12, to be honest, 12 and a half, and take the over then and hopefully get a better number than the minus. How do you approach the Chiefs, probably the most public team in the NFL right now, the biggest contender? Yeah, this uh, team's success has been like a metronome <laughs> under Andy Reid. It's just they're so reliable, and they've averaged 11.7 regular season wins in Reid's 10 seasons as head coach. Um, you mentioned the division, Joe. Like, really, I think even 4-2 and two might be mildly disappointing in division. The like Chiefs could easily go 5-1, and 6-0 and oh in this division. And, um, yeah, they're always going to have – a potent offense with Patrick Mahomes there, but I love what they did last year in the 2022 draft to beef up their defensive infrastructure. They already had some blue chippers with Chris Jones, Nick Bolton, Legereus Sneed, and mm. then they added Trent McDuffie, Brian Cook, George Karloftis, Leo Chanel. So they've got a deep defense now. And uh, maybe this could be the best defense they've had mm. in the Andy Reid era. And they've added some interesting pieces on offense, too, especially with the pass catchers. So, yeah, they lost uh, Orlando Brown Jr., their starting left tackle, one of the better ones in the league. But that's really the only significant personnel right. loss they had in the offseason. And uh, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I like the over and I'm not shy about maybe pushing it to 12 and a half and getting yeah. a better number. 12 is where I want to live with that one. I think they can easily get back to 13. I don't think that's a problem. 14 is certainly in their sphere too. And some of these we've already made wagers on. One of them that I've already made a wager on is the Philadelphia Eagles. And if you want to follow what we're into, you can do that at bettingpros.com slash Joe or bettingpros.com slash Pat. Follow us over there and you can see what we're in and you can get in on that as well. So we can all go ahead and make bank together. It's a fun way to do that. And of course, if you use the premium tools at betting pros, uh, which we highly recommend giving it a shot, you can go to bettingpros.com slash uh, upgrade to go ahead and make sure you get the best betting tools on the planet over on the premium side of things. Then you can go ahead and not only track your own bets, track hours, unlock a lot of custom analysis for your betting performance, but the Eagles are a team 
path that I am very much on this year because to me, the Eagles are the class of the NFC. I don't see a team in the NFC really that can challenge them on both sides of this football. Normally, I'm fading teams coming off tough Super Bowl losses, but the Eagles on defense got younger and faster. The Eagles look like a team that, you know, was right hanging with there with the Chiefs, which is no easy task. The number for them is 11 and a half. The over is at plus 120. I'm all in. The under is minus 125. I already have Eagles shares for the conference winner, even to get back to the Super Bowl and this win total. Frankly, Pat, I'm looking at it and I'm over there as well. I can't believe you can still get plus money for a team that won 14 games last year. What are your thoughts on the Eagles? And I know the division's more competitive with the Cowboys and Giants, but I still feel real confident in the Eagles. How do you feel? Yeah, it is a tough division, and, and Dallas is probably the second best team in the NFC. But I'm I'm with you, Joe. Mm-hmm. I do think the Eagles are the class of the NFC, and getting them over 11 and a half at plus money is, is pretty irresistible. I mean, this was a team that um, ranked third in offensive DVOA last year, sixth in d- defensive DVOA. And they've added pieces. Yeah, they lost a few, especially on defense. But, um, you know, Howie Roseman not resting on his laurels, always looking for ways to upgrade the team, made some interesting moves in the draft, uh, bringing in more firepower from the University of Georgia. And that lights out defense. So, um, yeah, this is still going to be a really good team. And I'm inclined to bet the over on this win total. All right. The one to me, the contender that has the most questions is the San Francisco 49ers. I mentioned before about the Buffalo Bills feeling like a team where the window is tightening for them. And I kind of have the same feeling about the 49ers. Yes, they're loaded. The defense is still very good. They've got a lot of offensive weapons, but the quarterback uncertainty to me is an issue. Brock Purdy coming off an injury. I know he played very well last year, but it was a relatively small sample. And the more you play in the league, the more they understand what you do well and what you struggle with. And there's a lot more tape on you to adjust. Trey Lance trying to... Garner faith again with his front office and with his coaching staff. So some uncertainties heading in the number here is 10 and a half, the over minus 142, the under plus 130. Pat that under staring me in the face here. And I know San Fran's kind of been that team the last few seasons, but last year specifically, you also had a Rams team that didn't have Stafford or Cooper cup. You had the San Francisco 49ers go undefeated in this division I don't think that happens again. And if it doesn't, all of a sudden that 13 win team looks a lot more like a 10 or 11 win team. This one is kind of threading the needle. What do you want to do with the 49ers? Boy, um, I kind of want to walk away, Joe. (laughs) I mean, um, the reason I can't get on board with the under is that they have this division that could be just like if Seattle does not live up to expectations. This division, other than San Francisco, is going to be bad because mm-hmm. the Cardinals uh, seem like that seems like two automatic wins for the 49ers. The Rams could maybe be two automatic wins for the 49ers. We'll see about that. I mean, Sean McVay is a really good coach, but um, they've taken some personnel hits. Salary cap things have caught up to them. Um, so, but as you alluded to, the quarterback situation, I cannot bet a team to win 11 or more games with confidence when they have an unsettled quarterback situation. And I do think things are still sort of in a state of flux, even though they seem to be putting their thumb on the scale for Brock Purdy. But I mean, this is the guy who was taken last in the 2022 draft. And although he showed out last year, he was also doing it against a lot of bad defenses. He was. If you go back and look at the teams he played. So um, betting them over 10 and a half wins at minus 142. No thanks. Mm, uh, Certainly one to grow on there and one to think about. Let's switch gears and take a look at some of these division odds. Obviously, you already have heavy favorites. Kansas City minus 160. San Fran minus 160. Jacksonville minus 155. Very heavy. But Philadelphia minus 110. Pat, this is one that I'm in on. Buffalo Bills at plus 130. This is where we start going to our first of the plus money favorites. But again, I think this one's more of a trap. I've actually gone out there and I have a video on betting pros right now. My favorite 10 bets. Go back and take a look at it on the YouTube channel. My favorite 10 futures bets of the season. And the Jets at plus 280 are actually, in my opinion, the better bet than the Buffalo Bills at plus 130. That defense of the Jets is already playoff caliber. 29th ranked offense in points last year. Even if Aaron Rodgers is just a game manager at this point in his career, I think that goes a long way with the confidence building. I am fading the Buffalo plus 130 number. How about you? 
I'm with you. Mm. I, I would much rather bet the Jets at those numbers. I think the Jets have a better defense than Buffalo, and I don't think it's even a question this year. I mean, I, I think the Jets' offense is a long way to go to catch up to the Buffalo offense, but um, the Jets could very easily win this division. And I, I just don't think that's an enticing enough number to interest me in the Bills. But uh, you mentioned the Eagles, Joe. I'm not going to talk you or anyone else out of betting the Eagles to win this division at minus 10, but they're not my favorite bet to win the NFC East. I do like Dallas a little more at uh, last I saw plus 190. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Cowboys were second in defensive DVOA, 10th in special teams DVOA last year. The offense was only middle of the pack, but Dak Prescott should be better after a year in which he was surprisingly inefficient, uh, his interception rate went through the roof. I wonder if that's a one-year anomaly and if Dak is back to being one of the better quarterbacks in the league this year. So um, I think they're a, a dangerous team for Philadelphia. I think the two best teams in the NFC are, are jammed into the same division. So that's the reason I, I can't totally get on board with the Eagles at minus 110 just because I like Dallas a little more at plus 190. I understand. I feel like the Cowboys always find a way to disappoint, though. So I'm going to still go with the Eagles. That's where I'm. I just, man, they're just a class. The NFC is really weak this year, especially that South again. Now that Tom Brady's out of it. Uh, speaking of some divisions that are competitive, we talked about the AFC North, the Bengals at plus 160, Baltimore Ravens and the second favorite here, plus 230. Uh, do you go for either one of these or is there a wild card to win this division for you that you think really is the contender people should be paying attention to? Yeah, my favorite is actually the Steelers to win this, Joe, mm -hmm. and they have the longest odds of any team in the AFC North at plus 500. And part of it is that after their week nine bye, uh, the Steelers were sixth in overall DVOA down the stretch last year. And that was with Kenny Pickett, who actually had some pretty respectable performances of late. Uh, we know Mike Tomlin doesn't have losing seasons. It's just a question of how far over 500 the Steelers are. And um, you know, I think this defense is going to be back to being very good. I think this is probably the best offensive line the Steelers have had in the last half decade. I mean, they've made some nice upgrades there, took a tackle in the first round, brought in a pair of free agent guards. So I kind of like the Steelers at longer odds than I do either the Ravens or the Bengals. Coaching matters. Mike Tomlin always shows up and they did do some things they needed to to address that offensive line in the offseason. Let's take a look at some uh, odds to make the playoffs. Now, whether we like the, the Detroit Lions to win that division or not, to make the playoffs, yes, is minus 162. So everybody thinks they are. But Pat, you're getting plus 145 if it's a complete swing and miss. I hate being negative because the Lions fans deserve better, but I also want to make money. You're going on the yes side at the minus 162, which seems like a lot of juice, or the no at plus 145. I'm going on the no at plus Ooh. 145, Joe. I mean, as I said, I think it's a year of talent consolidation for the Lions, and they do not hit full stride this year. And granted, a lot of bad teams in that division, but I kind of think the NFC North is only getting one playoff team, and in theory, it could be any of those four teams. I mean, the Bears are going to be better. They're still not going to be good, but they're going to be better. Green Bay, who knows? The Vikings, who knows? Mm -hmm. They both have some holes uh, as far as the roster, personnel. But um, yeah, it's going to be a, a wildly unpredictable division, I think. And I don't feel confident betting the Lions to make the playoffs. Well, if you don't feel confident in the Lions, you feel confident with Minnesota to make the playoffs as a yes at plus 120 because you're getting plus money on that one as well. No, I'd rather take the no at minus 114 on them. So also. no Lions, no Minnesota. Everybody's out. So go pack go. Is that what I'm sensing here? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Not don't mistake that for Green Bay enthusiasm from this Packers fan, Joe. All right, um, well, somebody's got to make the playoffs from the yeah, North. I don't I, know who. Yeah. It's not the Bears. I can't get on board with that one. So I like the Minnesota Vikings plus one uh, plus 120 to make the playoffs. I think that's a good one. It's a little safer than the Lions, I think. Could be. Yeah, I just I don't love the price on any of the NFC okay. North teams. I think it's too unpredictable a division. What about Seattle? You, you mentioned they have some holes, but certainly were more competitive, I think, than anybody expected with Geno Smith. Plus 104 to not make the playoffs. Minus 120, yes. So the, right now, Vegas is saying that Seattle's a playoff team. Do you agree? 
I'm a little concerned. Uh, not really seeing value on either yes to make the playoffs at minus 120 or no at plus 104. Joe, what concerns me is that Gino was not great down the stretch mm-hmm. last season and like his final five or six starts. He was more like the Gino of the first 10 years of his career than the Gino who was an MVP candidate through the first 10, 11 weeks of the season. So I'm, I'm just not sure um, I trust Gino to make Seattle a team good enough to make the playoffs. I, I don't think they're going to win the division. I don't think they beat San Francisco, and I don't know if they're going to be good enough to get a wild card spot. Before we get to some of the playoff odds we have ahead of us, don't forget, everybody, if you want to get some premium betting pros action for free, all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel, click that like button, and drop a comment below in this video because every month we're giving away betting pros premium subscriptions again it's very easy to do again comment below i want to hear your favorite picks we're all in this together here that's why we're doing this so hopefully you can do that and maybe you just might win that free premium upgrade to bp tools oh, let's talk about playoff odds here the eagles here to win the conference plus 330 yes please already bet it i'm in i just think they're the heavy favorites kansas city plus 350 to win the afc side also i think is a good wager the next Three are the San Francisco 49ers at plus 400 to win their conference, to win the NFC. Buffalo at plus 475 to win the AFC. And Cincinnati at plus 550 to win the AFC. Now, I have bet Cincinnati the last two years and made money on this, especially when they got really close and then went to the Super Bowl there uh, two years ago. But to me, I'm looking at the Eagles and Chiefs, and they feel like the favorites for a reason. They feel like a good investment still. Pat, of all these contenders, which number looks the most appealing to you? Yeah, pass the knife and fork, Joe. I'm going to (laughs) eat chalk here with both the Eagles and the Chiefs. And since I'm so certain, well, pretty certain, that the NFC winner is going to come out of the NFC East, uh, I'm going to bet both the Eagles and the Cowboys. Mm. Uh, The Cowboys at a more generous, I think, plus 600 last time I checked on Mm DraftKings. So um, look, the Chiefs have represented the AFC in the Super Bowl three of the last four years, Mm -hmm. and they've they've won two of them. So like plus 300. I mean, I think their chances are really good. Maybe it seems like people get a little bored with them or something, uh, but we know Patrick Mahomes is going to be good. And as I mentioned before, like they've made some sort of under the radar upgrades on defense that I think is going to have them right on the doorstep again this year. Now, Kansas City opened at plus 500 to win the Super Bowl. That number is now up to plus 600 in some books on betting pros. Again, this is why you use the BP apps. You can find the best odds here. Philly opened at plus seven. Now it's a plus eight. They're trying to get you in. I'm already in on the Eagles. I'm in on the Chiefs. I've already bet these hard. I'm ready to go. I know it's boring, this rematch, but again, until somebody else emerges here, the health of Joe Burrow question, the defense a little bit of a question, Cincinnati losing the two safeties year over year. I have concerns about them there, and I don't like the other contenders. I don't like Buffalo, San Fran, Cincinnati. Those are the other top contenders, quote unquote, on the board. So once again, I'm eating chalk with Pat here, but these are really good return on investment numbers, plus 800, plus 600 for the two top teams, respectively. How do you see these top two? And is there another one that's looming out there that you think might have a really interesting contender shot? I don't think so, Joe. I mean, I'm really sort of zeroed in on the Eagles, the Cowboys and the Chiefs for a conference winner and Super Bowl winner. And uh, yeah, you have to love the price on the Chiefs, considering they've won two of the last four. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, they've won 50 percent of the last four Super Bowls. and, And, you know, you're getting them at what, plus 500? to win the Super Bowl. Um, yes, please. And I, I agree. I I think Philly and Dallas both have nice prices here. Yeah, uh, Dallas's defense, certainly a very good D. Just Dak Prescott. Got to make sure you protect the football a little bit more in 2023, which is odd because his old MO was protecting the football. That's who the guy was. We'll he, and, see. he and Daniel Jones traded places I last know. year. Joe Very was the strangest weird. thing in like a Freaky Friday type set. It was the upside down in the NFL. But we want to hear from you. You tell me in the comments below on the YouTube channel what your favorite contender wagers are. And who knows, maybe I'll bet them along with you. Don't forget, you can follow us on Betting Pros individually as well. You can go follow Pat, follow myself, follow some of the best bettors out there in the NFL market over on the Betting Pros app. Download it. It's free. It's fantastic and learn how to bet smarter, not harder. And if you drop that comment below and subscribe to the channel, you might just win a one year free premium upgrade to the best tools on the planet where we want to make bank. It's going to be a fun 
offseason this year in the NFL. We're going to talk about some preseason betting, too, in the weeks ahead. So we're going to get ready. we got more futures and a whole lot more betting all season long, all lined up for you. So subscribe wherever you get your pods. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For Pat Fitzboros, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.